أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي O oh my Lord, expand for me my chest, ease my task for me, and remove the impediment from my speech, so they may understand what I say. What I say. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu Man yahdihillahu fala mudullalah Wa man yudlilillahu fala hadiyalah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Amma ba'd Bail all praises for Allah, we praise him and seek his aid. And whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship at Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is a slave and messenger to proceed. Um, so today's session is about making the best of the last nights of Ramadan. Now, Ramadan, subhanAllah, it has come and it seems like it's passing through like lightning. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, the majority of us are saying, Alhamdulillah, it's been good. But we all agree that it's just passing by too quick. And that is how time is. Time doesn't stay for anyone. And when you're enjoying and when you're in the moment and when you are really enjoying the company of something or someone, time does pass very quick. And we cannot hold on to time. So, but when we have this time, whilst we have this time, we can make the best of it. Right? We can cherish it. We can, like, if there's, I was talking to one of my um, groups, and I was saying, look, you know, those people, you know, those special days, like an anniversary or a special day, like an Akika or a wedding day, people want to make the best of that day, right? You want to make the best of that day. You want to make that day last. You want to, you know, you really, really make that day a proper day like everything about the day is special so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us such a blessed amazing month and this hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really 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 touches me and really I wanted to talk focus on this and go forward from that inshallah Abu Huraira narrates, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever fasted the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah, then all his past sins will be forgiven. And whoever stands for the prayers in the night of Qadr out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah, then all his previous sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah, we can fast the whole month of Ramadan with Iman and hope. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us all our sins. How beautiful is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us opportunity upon opportunity upon opportunity from his mercy that he's giving us such one thing and then another thing and then another thing it's like piling up so much goodness for us and so much opportunities for us because we as human beings we need encouragement we need to hold on to hope we need to understand that and so what what did nabi sallallahu do towards the end of Ramadan. You know, we've been fasting for 24 days. 
if you started on a Saturday, 24 days. If you started on a Sunday, 25, 23 days. If you started on a Saturday tonight, after Maghrib, it is Laylatul Qadr, possibly Laylatul Qadr. Because Laylatul Qadr falls on one of the odd nights, 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, or the 29th. One of those five nights could be Laylatul Qadr. So if we've started on Saturday, then tonight, after Maghrib, straight after you've broken your fast, it's an odd night. And what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? Aisha Radhala narrates, with the start of the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to tighten his waist belt. And he used to pray all the night and he used to keep his family awake for the prayers. Such a blessed month, such a blessed night that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi would encourage his family members to stay awake for the night prayer. And we know that Sahabi Radhanan would stay awake in the night prayer. But on these nights, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi would especially keep them awake. This is an encouragement. And he would look for the night of Qadr. And if this is the state of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would tighten his waist belt, I can't imagine, just imagine just out of Ramadan, we hear the story, stories of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he was praying through the night that his you know, feet would swell. And then we're told that he is tightening his waist belt in the last 10 days of Ramadan, meaning he would put his extra effort in. And if you imagine, you know, the analogy of a racehorse, it goes around the track and when it comes to the end, it puts his, you know, it's already tired, it's done its, Rounds is coming to the end. That's when the racehorse pushes forward, puts its hundred and ten percent in. So, are we looking for Laylatul Qadr, or are we just assuming it's going to be on the twenty seventh, or we've missed it? What if we've missed it? Let's look at what Laylatul Qadr is. Laylatul Qadr is such a blessed night that a whole entire surah out of a hundred surahs, out of a hundred chapters in the Quran has been dedicated to this night. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this night? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Indeed, we send the Quran down during the night of decree. And what can make you know what is a night of decree? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. Better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend therein by permission of their Lord for every matter. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. And what can you make? And what can make you know what is the night of the de decree?
and Laylatul Qadr is possibly the most sacred night of the year. And the last one that uh, and it is referred to as a night of power or night of decree. And sisters, I want you to imagine, take a moment to think and understand this. When the Quran came to this ummah, it became the best of ummahs. And the Quran came down in Ramadan and it became the best of all months. And the Quran came to the heart of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he became the best of mankind. And the Quran came down in Laylatul Qadr and it became the best of nights. Imagine a part of this Quran is preserved in the hearts of one of your hearts. Imagine that heart. Just imagine. Imagine the reciter of that Quran in Salah and out of Salah. How blessed is that heart? How blessed is that tongue? So Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months, right? Just imagine a thousand months. This is one thousand months. This is one thousand months. How many of us will live one thousand months? How many of us? Ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years, sixty years, seventy years, eighty years, eighty four years. Depends. Are you thirty in your thirties? Are you in your forties? Are you in your fifties? Have we been able to spend? Have we spent every moment in Ibadah? Have we spent every hour in worship? Yet, if we can find this night, it will be counted as more than a better for us than a thousand months, more than 84 years of Ibadah. Of worship. That's one thousand months. One th imagine each line is a month and times that by thirty. I'm giving you a visual, sisters, because when we think about a thousand months. It sounds like a word. It sounds like a, it's like a statement. We have this one month, right? I put the Ramadan calendar for you to first imagine one month of fasting and then Taraweeh. And then it feels like a heavy burden because of the change in time and everything, but we are working, we are trying our best to make this month matter. So as a bonus, Allah SWT is giving us and saying to us that in this month, there's a night that's better for you than a thousand months. We want Ramadan to count. And in this Ramadan, we have a month a night, sorry, we have a night that is better for us than a thousand months. Imagine the whole of this month of Ramadan times up by a thousand. That 
is better for us just in that one night. The reward that we get just in one night. And that time starts at Maghrib until Fajr, which is approximately only eight hours from the moment you break your fast till the beginning of Fajr time. It's approximately eight hours, only a third of a day. If we can focus and look for the night of Qadr, like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, in those eight hours. And how many hours do we have in a day? 24 hours, right? And that night is only a third of a 24 hour day. And how many hours is there in a month? The 720 hours times it by a thousand. How many of us can spend dedicated time in Ibadah? So do the math, the sisters. When we focus and we look for this night, and we, inshallah, if we are focusing every um, odd night in particular, every night is good, every odd night, we will find it, inshallah. Just like Nabi Sallallahu looked for it. It's a sunnah. We want to do what Nabi Sassam did. And imagine spending, finding Laylatul Qadr and doing worship in that night is better than 720,000 hours of worship. And in my head, I cannot imagine 720,000 hours, right? So, some points to focus on, this is especially in these last five or six days that's left. We've got possibility the 25th or night, 27th and 29th left. We've only got five or six days of Ramadan left. And the night starts at Maghrib, not Isha. And remember, Allah SWT looks at our intentions. Allah SWT looks at what we want to do. So if you're on your periods, Allah knows that you want to look for Ramadan. If you're unwell, Allah knows. And I remember the sister um, was telling me that every night, you know, she was. Um, really struggling a few years ago with her um, tarawih prayer. And every time she would go into surgery, she'd, she'd fall asleep. And that's from Allah, you know? Because Allah looks at the intention. She wanted to stay awake the whole night, but her body was tired. And that sleep that came, in, every time she'd go into surgery, she'd fall asleep, automatic. You know, and that was from Allah. And she'd wake up 15, 20 minutes later and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I've got to pray, I've got to stay awake. SubhanAllah. So Allah looks at our intentions. If we're unwell, the body look, looking after the body at that time. It's a worship. But worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance to how much we can. But we need to try our best. This is particularly for men, but it's women can do this well, to pray Qiyam with the Imam until he finishes. This, this, this is something that um, if, you, if you're at the masjid, men, men would go to the masjid and they would, they would do this. Dua, particularly short ones. Like for example, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar. That dua is short and concise. You're asking Allah SWT for the best in this world, the best in the hereafter, and safety from hellfire. Yet it's not heavy, it's not hard. You could 
you could be going into the kitchen, preparing suhoor, pre pre preparing food for the children. You know, we all have, have things to do, but the du'as can be on our lips. And if it's something that's easy to memorize, easy to say, then it would be easier for us to be in that practice, inshallah. And to in increase in istighfar, to ask Allah SWT for forgiveness. And Allah SWT will answer our du'as if we are sincere. And to give in charity, who doesn't want their charity to be multiplied. And how many times? The worth of 84 years. Times up by 84 years. Every pound is increased and increased and increased and I can't even do the math. Diversify good deeds. As parents, we want to keep our families awake, like the Nabi says to keep his family awake. So I have children who get diverted very quickly. So what we do is we diversify the ibadah. So we pray for a little while, read Quran for a little while, we do ta'aleem. So I read um, a hadith or we discuss something from the deen, something good. And the last few um, few nights, what we've been doing is because they've been getting tired. We got um, I've got these board games, Islamic board games. I get them out, and we we go around asking questions, increasing our knowledge in the. This is an ibadah as well. So diversify good deeds. And anything that's good, not God, so my mistake, sisters, anything that's good to do in Ramadan, anything that's good to do even out of Ramadan, do it on this night. Even leaving bad is a goodness. So you're getting angry, leave it. Do sabr, leave it. I'm doing sabr for the sake of Allah. That will be multiplied as a good deed for us times 84 years, a thousand months. Who doesn't want this? If I said to all of you that today, if you put 10 pounds into a, in here, after a few years, come back here and it will be multiplied 1,000 times. But don't look at it. Don't touch it. Just put it here and don't come back to it. Let's say 10 years. And it will be multiplied by 1,000 times. Forget 1,000 times. It's more than a thousand times and better. So give in charity because we will get that back and we'll get it back in so much mul multitudes that we cannot even imagine. And anything, even leaving, you know, for example, if you can't stay awake to do good, then leave the bad. That's an ibadah. I just go to even going to sleep with the intention of not doing anything bad, that's an ibadah because you're doing it for the sake of Allah to leave bad. And last but not least, this is I want to talk about the focus on istighfar. Because on this night, 
Aisha Radhanan, regarding this night, Aisha Radhanan asked, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if I know which night is Laylatul Qadr, what should I say on that night? He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbu l'afwa ta'afu anni. And this dua had different ways of reading it. Allahumma inna ka'afoon kareem tuhibbu l'afwa ta'afu anni. And so forth. However, we're going to be sticking to what came in the hadith right now, inshallah. Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbu l'afwa ta'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner. You love to pardon, so pardon me. So what does Afu mean? Afu is not just any kind of forgiveness. Afu is a forgiveness that is erased forever. Our deeds are being written down in the book of deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just forgiving us. If we ask him, for Afu, he's deleting the sin from us. So increase in this dua, especially in the nights and then the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbu l'afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner and you love to pardon, so pardon me. So leave sin and Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the sins that we've done in the past and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase it for us. Imagine a blackboard. Imagine a blackboard and there's sin. The word sin written on it. This is a sin that we have done. So when we are asking Allah subhanahu for this dua, Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibla for fa'fuani, it's like a whiteboard being erased. The word sin will no longer be there. Just like that, a book of deeds, that sin will be erased. But let's let's come back to the fact that we need to still remember not to go back to that sin. So our memory will not be erased. We will have to remember not to go back to it. But Alhamdulillah, from Allah's mercy, from his love for us, he gives us the opportunity to um, find in this month his mercy, his forgiveness, and safety from hellfire. Because if we are safe from hellfire, that means we will enter Jannah. And who does not want to enter Jannah? Because I don't know how long I will live. I don't know how long we will live, none of us. But there's one guarantee that we all have. And we all want to go to Jannah. So let's work on the Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in finding the night of Qadr. And spending as much time in worship on that night. And what is worship, sisters? Just a quick reminder is every act of worship, every act that we do for the sake of Allah. Every act that we do for the sake of Allah.
Okay. So, sisters, anyone want to add or share any insights you have? Okay, if there's no one who wants to add to that, inshallah, we'll end with the door. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa How are you, sister? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, just a question. Basically, you said um, Qiyam. Does Qiyam, does it mean after Taraweh or is this just, just the Taraweh with the Imam? Um, in the masjids, some masjids they do after on the odd nights. Yeah. Do some Qiyams, <clears throat> some um, congregation prayers mm. after in the night. But this is not um, particular for, for women in general, it's for men who go to, who go to the masjid. But it was in one of the hadith, so I thought I'd mention it, inshallah. So we just finish our, our taraweh and our witr and we come home and do the extra bad at home? Yeah, inshallah. 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 Because the best place for us women to be is in the home. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So we can do extra uh, salah just extra. before, before for suhur? Yep. And extra nafal, uh, tahajjud, recite Quran. There's nothing in particular, like there's no particular salah for Laylatul Qadr. But extra by the extra nafas, um, like Kalawi, um, the Hajjud, reciting Quran, you know, extra Ibada. Yeah. Okay, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khairan, sisters, for um, participating. I'm just going to read the dua and end, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Bismillahi rahmani rahim Walash. إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر <coughs> سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك اللهم إنك عفو عفو تهب لا ففأف عني اللهم إنك عفو تهب لا ففأف عني اللهم إنك عفو تهب لا ففأف عني ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته